What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, and Happy Thanksgiving. Anyway, I know it's been a while, so I wanted to sit down with you today and just talk about a good read I just had. And if you notice, my voice sounds a little different today. I'm about congested. Voice is hoarse, nose is stopped up, all of that. But we're still gonna push through today. Anyway, the book I've been reading is called The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. And I think it has a lot of really good points. And I just wanna share five of them with you today that I think will set off the perfect tone for this year. So we're gonna jump straight into the money lessons that I've learned from reading this book. So the first lesson that really stuck out to me from this book is that the true value of money is giving you control over your time. And when I read that, I was like, woof, that's about good because it's something that I constantly forget about. The more my income increases, the more my net worth increases, the more financially successful that I become, that's something that I get further and further from, I feel like, and it was just a good reminder to read about that in the book. And what it reminds me is that there's a purpose for the money that you're getting, but you have to be smart with it and with where you put it. There should be portions of money that goes aside for fun and games and luxury and relaxation, and there should be a bigger portion of money that goes towards the future, whether that's savings, emergency fund, investing, and things like that. And when you put your money into those things, what it does is it buys you freedom in the future. It just gives you access to bigger and better opportunities for yourself, your family, and the people you care about and things like that. But that was the first lesson that really stuck out to me like, man, I gotta talk about this on my channel because I forget about it so much. So that's something I want all of you to think about throughout this entire year. I promise it will make you more intentional with your money and it even in that few seconds that it took me to read that portion of the book it led to a lot of massive action on my part when it came to my own personal finances which i'll talk about in another video don't worry y'all in between these lessons i'm drinking water trust me and the second money lesson is something that also made me really think and it's that everyone does personal finance differently and what i mean by that is everybody thinks they're right about the way they go about their own personal finances and in a way that's true because personal finances are personal and that makes a perfect amount of sense but what happens is people like me go on youtube and kind of talk about one specific way of doing personal finance and that's the right way that's the only way and that's just not the case you have to look at what truly works for you and it's, and it's kind of like everyone has their own personality, everybody has their own temperament. So some people are more outgoing, some people are more reserved, some people are more direct and straightforward, some people are more bashful and quiet and things like that, right? And a lot of us feel that the way we go about situations and handle situations are the way to handle them and you don't really wanna stray away from the way that you do things. Like if you see something you don't like, you might be the type of person that's like, yeah, I said something about it. I'll tell them again. I'm going to tell them the way it is. You know, all passionate and fired up and whatnot. Some people are more reserved. Some people are like, ah, I didn't like that, but it's, it's not that big of a deal. <clears throat> now, if it happens again, we're going to talk about it, but I'm, I'm just going to let that one slide. But everybody feels like the way that they think about situations are appropriate, and it's the same exact way with personal finances. You know, I lean more on the saving and investing side more than anything. But some people are really, really dead set on getting out of debt, whether it's only their student loans or if it's their student loans, credit cards, and a sea of debt that they just feel like they're in. You know, for me, I'm like, I'd rather look at the whole situation and say, okay, I have debt, but it's student loan debt. I can pay that like normal and it take the 10 years that it's supposed to take. And while I'm paying that off for the 10 years, I can go ahead and put money into assets that have much of a bigger return than paying off my debt would have for me. Because in reality, I know for me personally, my student loan debt, which I haven't really talked about much on this channel, funnily enough, um, the, the, at the max, the interest rate is like 5%. Whereas my investment portfolio right now is up like 50 something percent. And that's one of them. So that that is building my net worth. And I'm simultaneously making my debt go down little by little. And it's a lot of this came from experience where I was paying off massive amounts of my debt at a time. I was literally throwing most of my money at my debt when I first got out of college. But then I realized I could just 
build the life that I want and deserve, not just for myself, but my family. And on the side, I can pay off debt. And that's just how I personally choose to do it. And that way makes the most mathematical sense when it comes to personal finance. But f personal finance is bigger than just numbers. It's also your psychology, hence, you know, the book, The Psychology of Money. Some people feel psychologically better if they do something like pay off their debt early. It's just a weight off their shoulders. But for me, I have peace of mind knowing that I have money in my savings account, money in my emergency fund, and money in multiple different investment accounts in secure and high earning investments. Things like that, just, it makes sense. But we're all gonna do personal finance the way we wanna do it. The biggest thing is you gotta figure out what your goal and what your strategy is, and then just go about that. But if you listen to 20 different people about different financial topics, you're bound to get very, very, very different ways to go about it, and all of them can work. But if you try to do all of them at once, it ain't gonna work too well for you. The next one, number three, this is probably my favorite one. You can never be too prepared. And that sounds probably like what you think it's about. It's about saving money. Um, there's a lot of people who don't agree with saving money in general because your savings account doesn't really grow your money like at all. Like it's the percentage is so low that you will not notice you gaining money from a regular savings account. So in one sense, I understand that school of thought, but in the other sense, I think it's better to have liquid money that's just available to you whenever you might need it in the case of an emergency. And sure, you can cap that number out at a certain point, that's what I've done, but there is another school of thought that says, even though you've done those things to prepare yourself, you still don't know what you don't know might come up. For example, 2020, everything that happened in 2020, no one expected. It. And it wouldn't have hurt to have an extra bit of money uh, stacked off to the side. And so you can never be too prepared. And I'll never forget, somebody, somebody told me a while ago, this was maybe two years ago, they were like, yeah, only broke people have budgets. Only broke people save money. I don't know anybody who has a budget. I'm like, okay, look. I'm an investing type of person. I do a lot of research on Apple and Microsoft, for example, and businesses like that, the biggest businesses in the world have billions of dollars in cash reserves. That's their savings account. So if the biggest companies in the world have to have savings, who are you to think that you don't need to have one? And what I'm saying with all that is you can never be too prepared. Nothing bad can happen from you being too prepared. Even after you hit your savings goal and even after you hit your emergency fund goal, I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with continuing to just keep saving on top of it. It doesn't have to be the same amount you've been putting in. Like let's say you were putting $500 a month into your emergency fund. Once you hit that goal, you can you can make it go down to 100 a month or 200 a month or whatever you wanna do, but it's, the idea is that it's still increasing and that's that much more for you to have. And remember back to number one, this is gonna ultimately buy you your freedom. Not just the savings account now, but your savings and everything else accumulated, your investments and things like that, your 401k, your Roth IRA, that's gonna get you set. Number four is the idea of having enough, knowing when to stop. And this, this one is very profound to me because there's some people who, you know, I'll use myself as an example. When I was like 20, 21, I was like, man, I wanna make six figures. 25 did that okay cool now i want to make this <laughs> now you know and so the number just kept going up and the the question that the book asks is when is enough enough and back then i was always thinking if i just made double what i'm making right now that would be enough i wouldn't have to worry about anything i wouldn't care about extra bonuses or overtime i would just be comfortable where i'm at and you know, today I realize I am, I have surpassed the point where I said would make me happy those years ago, and I still want more. And so there's nothing wrong with wanting more. I encourage you to want more for yourself and your family, but it is something to truly sit and think about. When is enough enough? When is enough in your savings account enough? And once you get enough, what do you do? It doesn't mean you stop. It just means that I don't have to keep going as hard as I've been going. Just like what I was just talking about with the savings accounts. Yes, I have enough in my emergency fund. 
But for my own comfort, I'm going to keep putting a few dollars in there every single month. And it's going to continue to grow. Enough is being satisfied with where you're at in your career. You've moved up and up and up. And maybe you see that the people above you don't have a lot of free time. And so you're like, you know what? I don't, I'm, I'm good where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? And if you get to that point, you need to acknowledge and understand when enough is enough. So you just have to understand what your goal is. I would say year by year and then go from there. Understanding when enough is, is understanding when to back up off of the overtime. Understanding what enough is, is not going after every single promotion that comes up just because you want more and more and more and more. It doesn't mean that, like for me, I went across the country to get a higher paying job with more of a work-life balance. I've done that. Cool. I've been successful over here where I'm at. But even though I would love to make an extra $30,000 a year, I'm not about to go to another state again and just do it again because I, I enough is enough. Like you, you get what I'm saying? You have to understand when enough is good enough for you. And the one thing I will preface this point with is enough is temporary. So maybe go year by year and just reflect on your goals like you probably do every year anyway, and just look at how much would you like to make for that next year? Because the reason enough is temporary is because the economy changes, prices change, they go up and down, Cost of living definitely changes. The stock market changes. A lot of things change. Your family might change. You might have a kid. You might have a couple of kids. You might get married or you might get divorced, God forbid. But I'm just saying, things change in life and because they change, your goals have to change in order to adapt to the situation. And number five is something that I really want you all to take home and it's this. The world is too complex to let 100% of your decisions dictate 100% of your outcomes. And when I say that, I mean you can do everything right and still not be prepared for something. You can have your budget tracker, you can be saving, you can be tracking your expenses, you can be doing everything down to a T. But sometimes things happen. Things happen that make you shell out money and put yourself into debt or put yourself in an undesirable situation where you might have had an extra few thousand in your bank account and now you have to spend it all on a last minute trip to a different state for a family member for an emergency, for example. And that's actually happened to me and I was more obviously upset about what happened with the family member back then than I was about having to spend the money to go there. But I'm just saying the things that we go through are not always a result of our decisions because and the reason I bring this up is because I've spent a lot of time beating myself up saying I should have done this if I would have done this this wouldn't have happened you couldn't have known sometimes we just need to understand that you can't always prepare for everything which is why you can never be too prepared, which is why that was my takeaway number three. You can watch video after video after video, read book after book, and you can still find yourself feeling like you're behind financially or behind in life in general. Sometimes you might be in the right place at the right time and get an opportunity that you never thought you would ever have. Sometimes things work out and sometimes they don't but you've got to put your best foot forward at all times and be intentional about your decisions and what works out will work out. What won't work out won't work out. That's fine, but you have to keep pushing forward. We all go through something and all I'm telling you is do not be discouraged if a certain job doesn't work out or you're not getting paid enough or you're not saving enough. And if you're doing everything you can do, just keep doing everything you can do. And eventually that success that you're looking for is going to come. But backing out and tucking your tail between your legs and not really doing anything about it and just feeling like you're a victim of the world's circumstances, that is not going to get you the financial results that you want, need, and deserve in life. So those are my five takeaways. Thank you so much for watching this video. It is great to be back. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.